In this problem, we'll just briefly look at how we would execute this bootstrap hypothesis test in Excel. Um, so you may pause and read over this. Uh, these compare Dayton and Louisville uh, ticket prices coming out of those airports to a variety of other airports here. And we want to test whether the average ticket price out of Dayton equals the average test uh, average ticket price out of Louisville, but we believe that the Dayton ticket prices on average are higher than the Louisville ticket prices on average. So our decision decision criteria is that if, if the observed uh, sample mean for Dayton is significantly larger than that for Louisville, we will reject H naught. In other words, if the probability of observing something at least as large as the difference x sub d x bar sub d minus x sub, sub x bar sub L is sufficiently small, uh, 0.05 or smaller, we will reject H naught. So our calculations, uh, we want to figure these out. Now we, we're going to build the null hypothesis distribution. That is, that the distribution that's centered at zero, where we would want the assume that the mean difference is zero. Remember, we assume the null hypothesis is true. So if they're equal, that means their difference should be centered at zero. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we observe that um, n equals 8 and m equals 8, that in other words the sample sizes are the same. Um, we are going to pool them together because if the null hypothesis is true, then these come from the same distribution. So what I will do here is basically, first of all, set my sample size to 8 for Dayton and my population size is 16. So I want to keep the variability of the values intact, so I'm going to select the same sample size of the original sample from Dayton from this pooled population. So my variability would be uh, equivalent to what I would should see in a, in a si sample size of eight units. Now I'm going to generate the random sample. And so these are basically uh, randomly selecting eight tickets at a time and then calculating their averages. So these eight tickets uh, coming out of Dayton had a ticket price of 266.25. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste these into another sh uh, sheet because I'm going to calculate the differences between the mean ticket prices coming out of Dayton and Louisville. So now I'm going to simulate the same thing for Louisville. Now keep in mind we expect the averages to be pretty much the same because um, other than sampling variability we're assuming they come from the same distribution. We're going to then calculate the differences um, minus Louisville. Now we don't want to use the same sample twice. In other words we don't want to just copy this column and paste it here because we, we want to observe the differences that we might see in, due to sampling variability. So I'm going to calculate all my differences. I'm going to copy that on down so I can see that uh, they're negative and positive, but they're going to be centered around zero. So now I'm going to copy those differences, and I'm going to replace the 1,000 sample means with that difference. I'm going to copy those, I'm going to paste the values, and now I'm going to generate my sampling distribution histogram. And I notice that the mean is, well, it's not quite zero, but it's approximately zero. Um, now the reason we're getting that difference, and it's insignificant because the differences are so big, the fact that it's 0.269 below zero is not that substantial because look at how far out it spreads. Now, so now what I've done is I've simulated the null distribution, which is the null distribution is centered at zero. And I want to compare the observed sample difference that I actually get. So it's down here, my first sample is of size 8, my sa second sample is of size 8, so this bases it on the original 8 here for Dayton and the original 8 here for um, uh, Louisville. So I noticed that the difference between average Dayton ticket prices and average Louisville prices in my sample is 56.75. So I want to look at what's the probability of observing something greater than or equal to 56.75 if the null hypothesis is true. Well, the, the, the probability is 0.096. So if I look at 56.75, that difference is somewhere around here. And so the probability of seeing a difference of 56.75 or greater is not that improbable. In fact, because my cutoff is 5%, the, the fact that it's 9% shows me that, um, that my cutoff is here but my observed value of 56.75 is actually here. So what's my conclusion? Well, my conclusion is since the p-value is greater than alpha, we can't conclude that average ticket prices out of Dayton are significantly larger um, than average ticket prices out of Louisville.
based on sample